In this video, I'm going to be doing a review of the Dynaflow Liquid Armor Nano Coating. Personally, I don't like to use cases, and even though I do use a matte screen protector, if I could get away with not having to apply a screen protector to my phone, I'd prefer it, and that's why I was interested in this product. Um, I got it on sale at NCIX, and um, I watched this video. Unfortunately, in this video, Linus uses dummy phones, which are plastic, and Dynaflow's website says that this product is meant to be applied to glass. Um, so even though he does get really good results, uh, you can't scratch it off. Um, other reviews say that it doesn't actually work as well. So one second. So, such as one from Larry Greenberg. He applies it to a dummy phone and it scratches up. The only real test on YouTube at least is by Wes. He applies it to his actual phone and then he proceeds to use keys. Um, so there are keys and then he uses a screwdriver and lastly, he uses uh, a steak knife. So before I applied this to my brand new phone, um, I just wanted to do some tests and do it, do it on actual glass. So to start off, this is the box that it comes in. And opening it up, you've got the liquid armor itself. So it's just a spray. I'll try to get that so you can read it. Liquid armor, invisible screen protector, uh, nano coating technology, Dynaflow, and 10 milliliters made in Taiwan. Uh, each bottle is supposed to be good for about 50 applications, and you should. Uh, it's applied every uh, four to six months. Okay, inside the box, you've got the instruction manual, how to apply it, just in multiple languages. You've also got a microfiber pouch as well as a microfiber cloth. So the both sides are different. One is for grease removal. So this is things like fingerprints and uh, fingerprint oil, skin oil. And the other side is for dust removal. So my main issue with the reviews on YouTube was that they were using dummy phones and the only one that used an actual phone is the one by Wes. Uh, so before I trusted it with my brand new phone, I just wanted to do a test of my own. So I went to a local glass store, and this is regular two millimeter plate glass. Nothing special about it. Uh, most glass on phones is actually hardened to be scratch resistant, but this is just regular plate glass, so this will actually scratch easier. I'm just gonna clean it off. And as you can see, one piece is, one piece is wider than the other one. So I'm going to apply the liquid armor to one of them and then do some scratch tests. So before that, I'm just going to clean it off. First using the greasy side. I should probably use gloves for this. So clean it off. Just going to use this light to try to show that uh, the glass is pretty clean and as you can see there's really no scratches on it there's some fingerprints I'll just clean that off a bit more but uh, the glass for the most part right there at that angle is uh, scratch free so I'm just gonna clean off both sides So what you're supposed to do is use the light side and spray it on twice and then wipe it in a single direction. Just make sure you're aiming the nozzle correctly. And wipe the glass. It does smell sort of like rubbing alcohol. 
and you're supposed to leave it for at least 10 minutes, but I'm going to leave it overnight before uh, doing this. There we go. You're going to get some a little bit of streaking. Grab the light. You're going to see a little bit of streaking um, at certain angles. There you go, there's the streaking. But I'm just gonna leave it overnight and then once once it's uh, hardened, I'm gonna wipe it down, remove the streaks, and then perform some tests with it. So again, this is the liquid armor application on one side. So you're supposed to wipe it down on one side and then let it harden for at least 10, 20 minutes, uh, preferably overnight. So as you can see, it's now been over 24 hours and the solution should have hardened by now. So I'm just gonna do some scratch tests. So on the left is the glass that I applied the liquid armor to. I'm just gonna to try to show you some of the streaks on it. It's really hard to see the streaks, sorry. Let's see. Uh, sort of see it right there. So I'm just going to give it a wipe down. Um, there you go. You can see sort of the streaks right there. So again, I'm just going to use the cloth and wipe it down. See the streaks right there? You can see them sort of the vertical streaks. So I'm just going to keep wiping that until I can get rid of them. And they do come off. Um, so again, the left side is the glass that's been treated, and the right side is just uh, plain glass. Both of these, again, are just two millimeter plate glass that I just bought from a, a local glass shop. So just a bunch of things that. I sometimes carry around. I usually don't carry coins. Uh, I don't. I hate change. But uh, I've got a steak knife just to test it. Keys. Some Canadian money. That's two dollars. It's a loonie, a quarter. Some other coins. Things I do carry around. USB keys, especially with the caps off. So just to test and show how easy it is to scratch this regular plate glass that hasn't been, uh, hasn't been treated. So I'm just going to scratch the corner here. The key. And if you hold it up, you can sort of see some scratches. Very, very faint on the bottom there. I'm just going to take a coin. The toonie has some ridging. So... I hate the sound of a glass scratching. It's like nails on a chalkboard. And again, let's see, barely see some scratches there. It's really difficult. I actually have to apply more pressure. I'm gonna use a steak knife. Glass is actually proving really difficult to scratch. But if you look, zoom in, just gotta use the light and see if we can get some scratches to show up. So there you go, you can see all the scratching on the glass. Uh, depending on the angle, there we go. So there's all the scratches on the untreated glass. Um, again, so there you can see it. Okay, all the scratches. So 
again, the scratches are at the bottom there. And I'm just going to do the exact same thing to the glass on the left, which has been treated with the uh, screen protector. So take a coin. Actually, take, take the same coin. Sorry. And I am applying a lot of pressure. So let's take a look. And horizontally, grab the light. And you can see some scratches. So there's the horizontal scratches. Okay. Next, I'm going to try a steak knife just across the bottom here. And just across the bottom, get it just at the right angle. But you can barely see scratches right there. The horizontal scratches made from the knife. There we go. So right there. I'm just going to try the key and just scratch it vertically to give a different pattern or diagonally. And grab the light. And right off the bat, I can just see some scratches here. Uh, I'm going to try to get the angle right. So there we go, you can see the diagonal scratches right across there. So it looks like this doesn't really work. I'm going to try to wipe those down like Linus did in his video and see if the scratches do come off and the screen is protected below. Buff it off. This is actually really hard to see, but if I do buff it off, um, the horizontal scratches for the most part are gone. I'm just trying to get it at a good angle again. So the horizontal scratches. Um, we take a look, are mostly gone. I can't actually see them. Uh, and then the diagonal ones are still there. So in the corner, you can see, you can see the diagonal scratches are still there. I'm just going to wipe that down again. So once I wipe that down, using the light, it looks like the horizontal scratches are beginning to, f or sorry, the diagonal ones with the key are beginning to fade. It's right there. So from testing, it doesn't seem conclusive that this does work 100%, but it does offer a very good level of protection. All those little scratches um, seem to scrub off when I wipe them with the cloth. Um, I'm definitely a lot more rough with the coins and the knife than you'd actually be in real life. So for now, I won't be using it on my phones until I can do some more testing, but other applications such as the screen on my DSLR or the touch screen on this digital camera itself um, devices that you aren't really rough with or go inside a case, this does seem to offer a decent level of protection. Again, use this at your own risk, and hopefully I'll be making a follow-up to this once I test it some more.
Thanks for watching.